Matt, tell us a little bit uh, about um, a new kind of root kit. Is it a new? It's not that, hmm, it is and it isn't. And, and Dan and I were speaking about this earlier. Um, this is a root kit, a pr proof of concept root kit and mm -hmm. key logger that someone has posted to GitHub. And what's special about it is that it operates entirely within the GPU of a graphics card. Now, most, I, we've debated back and forth on what, what machines actually have standalone graphics cards, which ones don't. Uh, not all machines have them. If you have a gaming laptop, most likely you have a very nice one. Uh, but, you know, as, it depends on what machine you've got. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing about it is a, a, a GPU is it's a standalone processor that you slot into your machine. It handles graphics functions, but it can also be used for other functions. It, it, it is a yeah. full-on processor. Um, people often use them for doing Bitcoin mining or, right, or hash right. cracking or other computationally intensive stuff. So someone has written code that runs entirely in there, stores itself to the memory on this card, um, and is effectively invisible to most antivirus. Mm. So this is a rootkit, so it has the ability to hide other codes. So you might use it in order to hide your malware, which is still running on the CPU, and you can access uh, system memory using DMA, direct memory access. So it's, it's interesting. Like I was saying, this exists in other forms as well. People have written you know, code that runs entirely on the controller of a, a hard disk. So again, if it's running on a separate machine, and it is a fully separate machine, um, it doesn't have the same kind of, your antivirus is not going to be looking for this, or at least today's antivirus is not going to be looking for this. It's almost like an IoT thing, an Internet of Things thing, but it's just not a network interface. It's like a PCI interface, for example. Exactly. It, it is, again, a full separate yeah. machine. So yeah. it's interesting. It's definitely worth looking into and understanding how it works. And again, it's all up on GitHub for someone to investigate. Whether or not it really affects most users at this point, I have my doubts. I think that people will, will start using this little bits here and there, but I don't think it's going to make it into major malware families today. Mm -hmm. And my reasoning for that is, like I said, GPUs, standalone GPUs, don't exist in all hardware and I think, and in all PCs. And I think that if you want to have malware that's truly successful and you know, spreads widely and runs on most platforms, you wouldn't necessarily limit yourself to hardware that you're, you're on the fence mm -hmm. as to whether or not most of your targets will have it. W would this be kind of specialized to particular GPUs as well? Uh, I'm not actually sure about that. And um, I guess it depends on the architecture of the GPU, and I'm not an expert on that. Mm -hmm. I would defer to somebody else. Let's speak to that. Okay. Um, so the biggest lie of your computer is that it's just one computer. Yeah. There's like 14 <laughs> computers in there. There's like seven ARM chips in your like iPhone. Yeah, okay. Right. I mean, uh, these are you know clusters of computers operating together. It's like the old fighter joke. You know, <laughs> lots of parts flying in formation. <laughs> the reality is, if you compromise any of those computers, you compromise all of those computers. Mm -hmm. Uh, your antivirus, your, a lot of your security systems are focused on one of those computers. Mm -hmm. Granted, it's the big one, but all those other ones mutually trust each other. Yeah. See, the way it works when you're doing computer engineering is it's like, man, you know, making the CPU spend all this time dealing with this fiddly problem is really inefficient. Let's take that problem and put it on a dedicated device. Mm -hmm. And then it'll just like access memory and send events saying, I did the job. So you compromise the external device and you get all the access. You don't have to deal with all that pesky inspection. <laughs> so so it's, it's, of course, not limited yeah. to GPUs. It isn't actually limited to standalone devices. It'll work on the integrated stuff, too. Yeah. You do need to customize it for each platform, although stuff like OpenCL and various other standardizing protocols will go ahead and potentially allow cross cross-GPU yeah. malware to exist. Mm -hmm. um, most likely it'll have to be customized. Mm -hmm. There are two things you're trying to do when you operate off the main CPU. One, you're trying to evade detection during that particular boot. Mm -hmm. Potentially there's dedicated memory that no one can see that you're running, that you're polling, that you're doing stuff. Mm -hmm. You're also trying to achieve persistence. Yeah. The, the, the real thing about advanced persistent threats is not the threat part. It's the advanced persistence. Yeah. It's how do you get in and stay in, be in there a year from now. Yeah. And uh, you know, a lot of these external devices, I want to be clear, it's not just GPUs, have their own local storage, have their own BIOSes. Mm -hmm. Even your hard drive has more than just the spinning disk on it. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots and lots of places. There, there, there's a reason why there are facilities that if a machine is compromised, you throw it out. 
Mm -hmm. It's a very expensive solution to the problem, but it's also the only way to be sure. Yep, that's true. It absolutely is true.